Hi, I'm Dr. Barbara Byers, and thank you for joining me. Today, this podcast is called, What's This? Or Moving From What's This to What's Next? So, we say, what is this when something is happening that we didn't expect, that we don't understand? So, we're going to begin with the what. And What's happening in your life right now? What is it that is a current issue you're facing, maybe right in front of you, or maybe there's even a deeper issue, something that's been unresolved for a while? That is your what is happening. And so how much time do you spend then fretting about it, considering it, being stuck in that direction, feeling like a victim, trying to control it, introspecting about it, and um, that's our what. So think about making a tight fist. And that what is in that tight fist. You're, you're holding on to it. And you're um, like, um, spiritually, we're like this with some things. And sometimes we feel like this what in our fist is really greater than the Lord is. And we get stuck and discouraged and disillusioned and disappointed and discontent. And maybe it's something that's happened in our past or something we didn't expect to happen that did happen instead. And we we keep it tightly held. We keep it alive. Sometimes we even build it up and give it this place of honor in our life and allow it to influence our relationships and our decisions. And then instead of a consciousness of God, a consciousness of trusting his love, of being in his presence, we fill that space with a disappointment. Um, and it feels like that he's turned out to be different than we thought he was. But God wants to be who he really is. And he wants to show us his goodness in the midst of our what in the world is happening so our disappointed expectations really can keep us in a place of captivity. And it's often our attempt to protect ourselves. You know, Jesus, uh, just at every turn, puzzled and disappointed his, uh, his disciples. They didn't know what in the world sometimes. And in one interesting conversation, Peter asked, uh, what about that man? And he's referring to John. What, you know, what about John? And Jesus said, well, if I want him to remain until I come, Peter, what's that to you? You follow me. And you see that little phrase, what's that to you? It's the what that catches us. Well, this isn't what I expected. And sometimes if we have been a long time in a situation, we can really get uncertain and we, we, we get in that place sometimes where we believe more in the lack of what we're in than the fact, the truth, that God really is doing something we just don't know yet. So how do you come out of that fisted position? How do you come out of that, what's happening in my life? We want to change that what to so what. And by so what, I don't mean in a flippant way like, oh, just so what? Never mind. It does matter. So it's not flippant, but we want to be able to say, okay, so what? You know? And the Lord showed me, I think, a couple of keys to this. The first is our surrender. And sometimes we need to grieve. We need to feel the pain. We need to feel the anger. We need to feel all of that. But then we move to the place where we're giving it up. We are surrendering it to the Lord. We're abandoning our right to something in view of the greater thing, which is his reward to us. It's not defeat. It is not defeat. It is relinquishing to something, someone greater. So we have our fist and we are opening our fist to relinquish and release the old. But look what happens when we do that. Now our fist is open, our hand is open, and our hand is now open to receive the new and the good and to hold it. So uh, the ability to say that anointed, so what, is the confidence to say, no matter what, 
I trust you. Can't see the future. Not sure why this came my way. Not sure where it's going. But no matter what, I'll trust you. And it's how we transcend where we are now standing in the midst of the problem by surrendering to the Lord and by trusting him. Because the scripture says, as I cast my care on him, as I roll it all over onto him, as I open my fist and give it to him, he meets us there. He, he catches that surrender. He catches that care. And I'm stepping out of my difficulty. I'm stepping out of my problems and I'm stepping into the surety of his promises. I'm now light and not burdened and I can see more clearly. This so what comes by faith because we choose to believe what we know to be true of the Lord, that he's enough that he's sovereign, that he's faithful, that he cares deeply about every event, every inch, every aspect and layer of our lives, that he knows what he's about, that he takes responsibility for us, that he's made every provision. So th that's our part. That's our part to open our fist and then to hold fast to his promises and to collaborate with the Holy Spirit who is doing something beyond what we could think or imagine, because we haven't seen the end from the beginning yet. We, he, the Lord invites us to think with him and to think according to his promises. So I've just written a few of them out, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go over a few of them. Um, here, uh, here's Deuteronomy 33:12. May the beloved of the Lord dwell in security. That's us by him who shields him all the day for he dwells between his shoulders. Psalm 33, five, he loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord and that loving kindness is turned toward us. Jeremiah 24, six, I set my eyes on them for good. I give them a heart to know me. Isn't that good that he gives us a heart to know him? Psalm 15, five, Lord, you've assigned me my portion and my cup and have made my lot secure. Jeremiah 31, 12, they will come and shout for joy on the height of Zion, and they will be radiant over the new wine and the oil, over the flock of the herd, and their life will be like a water garden, and they will never languish again. We don't have to languish. We can have a well-watered life. Ruth 2, 12, May the Lord reward your work and may your wages be full from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you've come to take refuge. Psalm 34, 10. They who seek the Lord shall not be in want of any good thing. Are you just letting the word wash over you here? I hope as you're letting the word wash over you, you're opening your hand to release your troubles. Psalm 27, 3 through 5. My heart will not fear. The war rise against me. That's the what. I shall be confident in the day of trouble. He will conceal me in his shelter. In the secret place of his tent, he will hide me and lift me up on a rock. Psalm 28, 7, the Lord is my strength and shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart exalts and with my song, I shall thank him. Psalm 107, 29 and 30, he caused the storm to be still so that the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad because they were quiet and he guided them to their desired haven. Psalm 42, he brought me up out of a pit of destruction. No matter what or what has been, he brings us up out of it, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet on a rock, making my footsteps firm. Ezekiel 37, 14, I will put my spirit within you, and you will come to life, and I will place you on your own land. Jer um, Genesis 28, 15, I'm with you and will keep you wherever you go, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Psalm 116, seven, return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with us. And finally, Psalm 117, two, his loving kindness prevails over us. That's just a few 
uh, encouraging promises. So taking in the promises with faith, trust, and hope, we're able to say, so what, to a season of difficulty, and then say, no matter what, I'll trust you. And that readies us for the next step. Well, what's the next step? Well, that's just it. The so what changes now to now what, or what's next? What's next, Lord? And our what is happening can move over into, well, what's next? Remember I said we open our fist in trust and in surrender, and we position ourselves now to be open to the new thing that the Holy Spirit is bringing. Uh, our hand is now open, and it's expectant, and new things can come that the Lord wants to bring into our life, often really unknown to us, unexpected. Uh, but when we trust, that opens the doors for the Lord to bring heaven to earth in our life. So we need to lay out before him the old stuff, whatever has hung around, maybe from past seasons, whatever has been skewed, whatever is irrational, we invite him in and we invite what he says about it. And then we take hold of that with all of our heart because every promise in him is a yes. Every promise in him is an amen. And Jesus is just the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we need to get ourselves occupied with the promises. I write things on index cards and I'll, I'll paste them up sometimes on my bathroom mirror or I'll put them up in my car or something like that. Uh, keep them before me. Get them down in is the thing. Get the heart to receive and get them down in. Um, the Proverbs 4.20 says, Give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. That's, that's our collaboration with the Lord, to look at them, to take them in, to receive and to keep them and apprehend them, for they are life to those who find them. So when the slash comes across our page with something very difficult and we say, what is happening? Then the way of surrender and trust is our way. And that's the way we will see the Lord redeem our story. And remarkably, we can become co-authors with him of a new story because we're, we're, we're joint heirs with him in this life. And he is always present with us to help us see and, and to desire and to dream again. And all that can resurface uh, where disappointment and disillusion has buried and covered that. So let's confess to him our disappointment in our what, in our what's, what's happening. This has caught me uh, by surprise. I didn't want it. I didn't expect it. And then let's say to the Lord, all right, because I trust you, because I know your goodness, I'm going to be able to say, okay, so what? I'm going to continue walking with you. I'm going to continue on the path of trust and holiness. And no matter what, you're mine and I'm, I'm yours. And I will know your goodness in the land of the living. And then as we have our hands open, then we choose to receive the new that he's bringing. And uh, we can say, what's now? What's next? And I receive it and take it in. Because when we say what's next, we, we really do know the best is yet to come for us. So thank you for joining me. I uh, hope you'll come again.